I love Florence Pugh. I feel like she's among the best young actors working today, like Robert Pattinson, Mia Goth, Barry Cogan, and I've seen every single movie she's been in. Many of them great, a couple of them not so great. So here's my ranking of every Florence Pugh movie from worst to best in a starring or major supporting role. Let's get started. Malevolent is the only movie on this entire list that I don't really like at all. Even though it's a Netflix original, it very much feels like one of those mid 2000s straight to DVD movies that you would find in that bin at Walmart. And I'm really not trying to be harsh, I just want to be honest. Everything is very standard. There's not a lot of creativity or style. It's a lot of cut and paste jump scares with the same little girls around the corner and at the end of the hallway. You've seen it a hundred times. Florence is great here, but the movie, not so much. Please let me clarify before I begin to speak about this movie, I'm not a film snob. I do like Marvel. I think they've made some really entertaining movies, but this one is not one of their best. I think the biggest problem with this movie is we've compromised the antagonist between two villains that are very unfulfilling. The first one is super mysterious and threatening, but falls so far into the background so quickly. The second one is the most cliche James Bond world ending villain that I had zero interest in as soon as I met him. The action is at its best when it's grounded with car chases and hand to hand combat. And the movie so sadly loses its footing at the final sequence. Less is so much more in a movie like this. Scarlett Johansson and Florence Pugh's performances were easily the highlights of this movie, but this movie was not a highlight of their careers. Okay, so when I first heard of the title of this movie and saw the promo poster, I had very little confidence in this movie. It all seemed so bland. But then I saw the movie and I was pretty pleasantly surprised. This movie includes easily Florence Pugh's most intense role to date. Yes, more intense than Midsommar. She has to bounce between various states of mind, high on different drugs, drunk, sober, sad, conflicted, angry, frustrated, happy, and she does so seamlessly. Nothing of her feels overperformed or unconvincing. She nails it. I do, however, feel like the actors in this movie are better than the movie itself. We get a lot of story beats in this movie that just feel way too familiar. There are surely some really great moments, especially the scene in the bar with Florence and Alex Wolf easily easily the best scene for me. But overall, there isn't enough style or poignance in the writing or directing to elevate this movie above a decent drama. Let me be the first to say, I do not think this movie is the disaster that most people see it as. I don't think it's perfect. It truly has issues. I just don't think it's a disaster. I love the way this movie looks. I think it's really well directed from a visual standpoint. The set design and costumes and cinematography work together beautifully. It's gorgeous. And the hallucinations, symbols, and dream sequences are all really creatively composed. It's like a trippy, beautiful nightmare. But on the other hand, I have to be honest, I think the writing is a little hollow. I understand this movie is entirely symbolic, but I think the lessons we are taught and the observations that are made in the end here are already really obvious to the average viewer. I don't think anything totally new or fresh is being said socially or politically by the writer. Also considering this is identical to the Stepford Wives that has already been adapted twice. Florence is able to carry the intrigue with a tremendous performance and Chris Pine is fascinating to watch. But Harry Styles has a pretty uncompelling supporting performance. So yes, it's a little hollow, but the direction was intriguing, captivating, and beautiful to watch. Okay, now we're getting into the movies that I like quite a bit. I feel like this is probably the least known movie on this list since it's Florence Pugh's first movie. And let me just say, this movie is not for everybody. It kind of has that look of like a 2007 UK cable network TV show. It's the least cinematic looking out of every movie on here. But once I adjusted to that, I realized that this movie is incredibly wise and so ambitious in its storytelling. The basic premise is that the students at this school keep randomly fainting and no one can explain it. And the film uses this storyline to dig deep into the themes of young female experience, like exploring sexuality, feeling unheard, and the frustration that comes with struggling to understand oneself at such a young age. I do think the film is a little jarring and disjointed. I don't think the soundtrack and scenes are all gelled together as smoothly as, say, a ladybird. But overall, this film will have you thinking about it and appreciating it for a while after you see it. This movie is evil. 
unforgiving, and relentless. There are no good guys here, even Florence's character. Every single character does awful things or has this beaming arrogance towards others. And ironically, that's what I think makes this movie so great. It's fascinating to see what people do when their backs are against the wall, or when they are only inches away from getting exactly what they want. We often become our enemies after we destroy them, and I think that's ultimately what this movie is trying to say, among many other things. But before you decide to watch this, I have to warn you. If you don't like movies like The Witch, Drive My Car, and The Power of the Dog, don't watch this movie, because this movie is slow. And that's not a flaw, just a characteristic. The film is very patient, with beautiful, wide cinematography, and a story you could never predict. Okay, for me, the premise of this movie alone makes it a must watch. Here it is, Florence Pugh's character is a nurse who has been assigned to supervise a young girl because the girl claims she doesn't need to eat. She hasn't eaten for the past four months and she's perfectly healthy. The movie takes so many unexpected creative liberties, it breaks the fourth wall and talks to the audience. The movie acknowledges that it's a movie itself and it sometimes steps out of the movie onto the movie set into the real world. And this may all sound so gimmicky, but I think it works tastefully and further expresses as the movie's major themes. The story is gripping, and you're just desperately waiting for the reveal about why this girl doesn't have to eat. The reveal pays off beautifully, further enhancing the story and themes of religion versus science and how we use stories to save our own lives. It's beautiful. Trust me, when I saw this poster, I was expecting something very average, but this movie was easily the most pleasant surprise on this list. First of all, this movie is hilarious. It's got this beautiful balance between British and American humor. So while you have Lena Headey and Nick Frost bouncing lines off of each other, you have Vince Vaughn on the other side of the world roasting every character in his sight. And I don't know which side is funnier. And it's not just the humor that lands perfectly in this movie. The drama is so, so poignant. The film says so much about how dreamers can dedicate their heart and soul to something, but the world still doesn't owe them anything. I could just feel the emotions rising and rising within me in the last 30 minutes. I can't lie, I felt this. Overall, very talented actors, clever direction, hilarious jokes, and a conclusion that might make you tear up. I feel like it's impossible not to feel the passion and feminine spirit behind this movie. There's so much warmth to this movie in its visuals with the glowing golden color correction, the intimate up close cinematography, and the creaky crackling sound design. It all makes you feel really cozy and up close with the characters, like you're living in the house with these four young women experiencing the stories being told. I love how there are various stories being told for each character, but the film never feels convoluted because they all intertwine with each other structurally or thematically. The dialogue is beautiful, revealing themes around romantic companionship, the expectations behind that, the pressure around that, and the resistance from it that exists in young creative women. And so many of these societal limitations carry over into modern day. The movie demonstrates these parallels effortlessly. The dynamic between Florence Pugh, Timothy Chalamet, and Saoirse Ronan was the best aspect of the film for me. The movie is beautiful in every single way. I have no problem rewatching this at any time at all. And before I get to number one, I just want to say, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and a comment. It helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Thank you so much. On to number one. I think Ari Aster is just a master when it comes to horror, and he only has two films. I've never really seen a modern horror film done like this before, where basically the entire horror aspect of the film takes place during the day, and it isn't any less scary. You just feel like you're being cast under a deeper and deeper hypnosis as this film goes along, and it's terrifying. It's terrifyingly beautiful. The musical score is gorgeously eerie and unsettling. The cinematography is breathtaking and horrific, and the characters are all very carefully developed. They all have their own distinct personality and characteristics, which makes it believable and captivating when they make good and bad decisions. You just can't wait to see how this plays out for every single member of the friend group. The climax is horrifically epic and ties the themes of this film together magically. I know this movie is polarizing, but for me, it feels like a near perfect horror. And I think it will be looked back upon as at least a horror cult classic. All right, that's my ranking. Please let me know your Florence Pugh ranking below because I would love to discuss. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.